In this lesson, we'll start the process of delving into Max's track views, and we'll begin with the dope sheet. The track views are where we'd go to polish our animations. They're found under the graph editor's menu. Notice there are two, the curve editor and the dope sheet. To compare the two, you can start with the curve editor, and we will be discussing that actually in the next lesson in more detail. But just to show you, the curve editor is going to show us curves that represent function curves, which basically show our interpolation through time. So again, we're going to go ahead and discuss that a little bit later on. Now, the dope sheet right underneath, this is mainly for modifying our timing and spacing. This is similar to the 2D animator's exposure sheet, or X sheet, where you left notes as to how long to hold certain poses and what type of camera moves to make, or when to time animation to audio, things like that. Now, if we were to focus on our dope sheet toolbar, what we see at our left, starting from the front, we see edit keys. This makes it possible for us to go in and start to move these blocks which represent our keyframes. As far as the color coding of our blocks are concerned, the red represents our position keys, the green our rotate keys, and if we saw any blue, that would represent our scale keys. These gray blocks, we can call these our key hierarchies, because they allow us to move several groups of keys tied to the frame. So, for example, notice we have our position track here. If we wanted to move any position keys, let's say on frame 23 here, and right now there's just one, we can simply go to that gray block and only move a position key. Same thing applies for rotation. Notice there are about three rotation keys at the front, at frame 0 here. So if we were to select that gray block, notice we're sliding just our rotate keys around. So what that also means is that we can go to our transform track, select that gray block and move all of our transform keys. Now moving to the next button, this is going to allow us to edit our selection range. So this is similar to what we saw on our track bar. Once again, we can either slide our keys in time or we can simply scale them globally. And of course it doesn't have to be globally at all, we can go in and make individual edits. So that's what that's going to do for us. And I'd like to also bring your attention, if we were to go back to edit keys, to our modify subtree. The subtrees are basically what we can call our child keys, where we can go in and edit them individually. With that turned off, notice we also can access our selection range. So we have a combination of both. You also see that the gray blocks are converted into the selection range. Okay, so now what we have coming up is our filters, where we can basically tell Max what to show in our dope sheet. So if we didn't want to see our position tracks at all, we can toggle that off, click OK, and we see everything except for the position. All right, but I'll go ahead and bring that back. Hit OK. And next we have our move key tool and if we were to hold this down with the left mouse button we can move our keys horizontally or vertically. Next we have the slide keys tool. This allows us to move groups of keys. So here's how this works. I'll go ahead and select the key on frame 35. You can see that from our key stats. With that selected, if we were to go to the slide keys tool, if I'm going to go ahead and move this key to the right, only the keys to the right are going to move. Notice the left is not moving at all. But as I start to drag to the left, then only the keys to the left are going to move. So that can be a very helpful tool. And we can add keys if we like. Clicking on that, we can go in and just simply add a key wherever we'd like that to lie. And then to edit its value, we can use our key stats. Here's where the value parameter would be. And of course, this is the frame number. And then in the curve editor, we could actually use this to show the key stat within our workspace. So that's how we can add keys. I'm going to go ahead and undo and remove that key. We can scale keys if we like. So if we have that on and just move one key, all right, it's 
really not going to make any sense to use scale with one key. But if we select multiple keys, we can then see what that's going to do for us. Notice how that key in the center is going to move proportional to the key that we're sliding. And now we come to select time. This is what we'd use to remove frames or remove keyframes, reverse animation, scale time, and also to insert frames. So let's go ahead and learn how we can use this tool. Let's say if we wanted to remove some of the frames at the start of the animation. Let's say from frames 0 to 11, we moved, removed a few frames between those two keys. Well, if we went back to the track view, we can go to select time, select just a range here, and then choose delete time. And notice that has collapsed those frames. Of course, it didn't delete this frame, the frames that we had selected, but it's just shifted our keys down in time. So what we should get is the animation happening a little bit faster at the beginning. And that's exactly what we get. And if you'd like to add those frames back, go ahead and select the object here. If we'd like to add those frames back, we can use the Insert Time tool. So clicking that on, you can simply go back and drag. And notice that time is brought back. So we can see how the animation originally looked. OK, great. So let's go back. We can also scale time. And if we had that selected, notice how our cursor changes, and notice what happens as we drag. Great. Now, what's also nice is that if we want to, we can very quickly reverse our animation. That's what this button is going to do for us. So I'm going to go back to the Select Time tool, and I'll select all of the top hierarchy keys. With all of those selected, I'll go ahead and choose Reverse Time. Now, if we were to hit play, notice the animation is going to do just that, play and reverse. So that can be a very helpful tool. All right, so that brings us now to copying and pasting and also cutting keys. We'll go ahead and discuss copying and pasting, and you'll know how to cut keys from there. So to copy a key, we can't simply just select the key. We'd actually have to select a range and encompass the keys that way. If you also notice, if you find yourself selecting more keys than you'd like, chances are you probably have too much selected in your track view hierarchy. So let's say if we just wanted to focus on our position Z keys. Now, with that track selected, we could just select that key. And to copy it, now notice copy is made available. We can choose copy, simply click on a frame, and then choose paste. We can paste absolute, pasting the absolute value with no change or use paste relative for a slight offset. I'll go ahead and choose paste absolute. Okay, so we may see a slight difference in the animation from doing that. And you can definitely see that how far the ship is traveling downward. We lost that arc we had. Alright, so that's how we can copy and paste keys. And again, cutting keys would apply the same way. First select your range and then go in and cut and paste. I'm going to go ahead and remove that position Z keyframe that we had. So that's basically an overview of the dope sheet and we have some menu tools that we can use to enhance our keys and we're actually going to discuss that when we get into the curve editor and we're also going to discuss these things at the lower part of the track bar as far as uh, select, uh, track sets, filtering our tracks in the track hierarchy. We have discussed our key stats and we also have navigation tools. But again, that finishes this lesson and in the next lesson we'll get right into understanding how to use the curve editor.